Okay guys, this is uh, part three to the versatility series that I've been doing on the shotgun. Uh, what I've done is I've opened up a bunch of the shells and so what I'm going to do is just kind of go through and talk about uh, um, each shell. I didn't have this all the examples that we've, that we've uh, shown you before but I've opened up um, a few so we should be able to um, to get a pretty good idea of what's inside each shotgun shell. So uh, let's start off with the the low brass options. This is the Walmart ammo. This is the seven and a half shot. Let me see if I can pull it up. This is the seven and a half shot from Walmart. Okay, and uh, let me let me uh, show you the. There's two different kinds of um, wadding. There's the the shot cup, which is right here, and then there's the I guess you would consider this is this the wad. And then let me show you inside so you can see the the uh, the flakes of powder in there. Okay, and I'm going to just go ahead and pour those out just so you can see the amount of powder that's in it. It's kind of caked in there actually, but yeah, those are those are kind of like what they are, just kind of um, flakes of powder. Focus. Let's see here. There we go. So you can see them, little flat discs of powder. So that's what's in that. Now let me show you the seven and a half shot. This is uh, the seven and a half shot. And let me see. Let me. Uh, I'll, I'll compare these up here as we go. But that is the size of the seven and a half shot. All right. Now this is the Universal Winchester Universal stuff. Little smaller flakes of powder inside the the low brass casing and the wad and the shot cup are combined on this one here as you can see and then there's the top of it the universal eight shot okay and then let me compare let me show you the difference between the eight shot and the seven and a half shot okay so here is seven and a half and here's the eight shot when I can I like to buy sorry those packages are kinda kind of flashy in the camera. When I when I can, I like to buy the seven and a half shot in bulk rather than the eight shot. Just because I think the seven and a half shot's a little bit more usable. It's a little bit larger. Just to, just by a hair. Just a hair larger than than the than the eight shot. So eight shot, seven and a half shot, you can just kind of tell just a little bit of a difference in size. Okay. Now let's move on over to the this is the Winchester Steel number two shot. Let me show you how small. This is a high brass round, okay, if you can see it without spilling it out. And you can tell that it's got small little flakes of powder in there. And this one has a shot cup here. And this is a 3 inch magnum shell. And then it has a little bit of a wad right there. There's your wadding that separates the, cu the shot cup from the powder. And then, um, let's see. I think I pulled this out of, no, that goes with the cellar, uh, cellier and below, so. Now, the number two shot, this is steel, steel number two shot, and let me, let me compare that with the seven and a half, so you guys get an idea of the size comparison, okay? So there's number two shot in bird, and there is seven and a half shot, and you see the difference there. Um, now, if you're going to go with birdshot as a home defense load, I suggest that you go with like a number one or a number two shot. I wouldn't go anything less than a number four shot um, in home defense um, if you if you're going to go with birdshot, which I don't recommend anyway. I don't I don't think that birdshot is incredibly effective for uh, stopping um, the two-legged critter variety. So. Birdshot is meant for birds. Um, I know that there's people that will disagree with me and they'll talk about over penetration issues and I, I think I need to make a video on that just because there's because um, and just kind of talk about my philosophies of it but maybe I'll talk a little bit as as we go along here but but that's the difference size and difference between the number two and the seven and a half shot so okay and that is steel so the weight difference this is actually seven and a half shot weighs a lot more than this number two steel shot. Um, it's a lot less uh, dense a uh, metal. Okay, let's go on to the cellier and below. And these ones they have like little square flakes of powder in it. And this is kind of a uh, high brass as well. And it had this wadding that sat th this little pla this little cardboard wadding that sat right there. And then it had another wadding that kind of is kind of squishy. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you see it. It's got like natural fibers in it. 
not sure what exactly it's made of. But that was sitting over top of that, and that kind of buffered the uh, 12 the 12 pellets of of double double aught buck. So let me show you the double aught buck compared to the seven and a half and the number two shot. Okay, so see if I can get that that glare out of there as much as I possibly can. Okay, so uh, we have the number two shot. Seven and a half, and the double lot buck. The double lot buck is 0.33 um, inches in in caliber, in diameter. Those balls. So it's it's pretty much like um, it's pretty much like shooting a 32 ACP 12 times into somebody. <laughs> um, actually, a much much faster velocity. I don't. I'm not quite sure what the grain is on this, but I'm thinking they're about about a 60 grain, 33 caliber uh, pellet. So there's the double lot buck. All right, and that's what you're normally going to get at. Now your normal two and a half um, shot variety, two and a half, um, two and three quarter inch shells, are going to have typically nine pellets of double lot buck. The Cellier Blow is a is kind of like a hybrid between a two and a half and a three inch shell, and they ha <clears throat> and they have twelve pellets of double lot buck. Most of your three and a half or your three inch uh, magnums have fifteen pellets, so they're kind of like right in between. Okay, and let's see, let's go on to, okay, so that takes care of those. So we'll, we'll put that plate aside, and then I'll show you these next ones here. Now, uh, first off, let's talk about the, uh, this is the number four shot from Winchester. Okay, so this is that pheasant load that I showed in the, in the previous video. And I, I kind of spilled them out, so I'm going to show you the powder as much as, I, as best I can right there. It's kind of a fine, just fine disc powder. And it had some cardboard wadding, is what it had in it. And then let me show you uh, the, I'll show you the, oh, and hey, let me show you this. I'll show you the, uh, the primer pocket in there. You can see that it has actual, some of the powders put in there. But that's the primer on, in the middle there. Turn it over and you can see the, the end of the shell, just like that. And that, the number four shot, compare that with the number two shot, and for reference, we'll do the, 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 the seven and a half as well. So, the number four shot is here, the number two shot, and the seven and a half right there. So you can see that the number four is a bit in between. It's um, not quite sure what the caliber is. You can look it up, look it up pretty easily. But again, uh, if you're going to go bird shot for it, I would I would suggest at least going number two shot if you can get away with it. Definitely do not go steel. If you're going to do a home defense, I would go with um, a pretty stout. Um, I'd go with the highest brass stuff I could get, and I would go with um, a number two shot in probably a three-inch mag in lead. Okay. And so there's your number four shot in your Winchester variety. So real, real good um, against turkeys, um, rabbits, pheasants. A um, little bit larger, a little bit larger um, upland game. So, all right. Next we have the. Let's let's show you the little Aguila slug. So the little Aguila slug, you can see kind of the powder, some of the bits of powder in there. Uh, real fine, real. This is, has the finest powder of any of them so far, and I think that reason why is because it just doesn't have as much space inside for the powder. So they actually use a smaller, uh, smaller size powder, a finer powder to put more of it in to keep it more dense inside. And then you can see the pri the the uh, primer pocket in there too, which is kind of cool. You can see the primer inside there. Okay, and there is the shell. That's the size of it, real small. Okay, and here is there is a little bit of a uh, wad that sits behind the the slug, and here is your lead slug. So it is the non-rifled. Um, did you even see that? I don't know if I even got that in camera. Let me show you. That sits right in the back there. That's how it sits inside the slug. Okay. Um, so it's got a hollow, hollow base. So it is a foster type slug, which means it's kind of like a badminton type um, type slug. I don't think it's going to be as accurate, just because it's it's shorter. Okay, and I guess you know really when you're talking about um, sta stability, the longer the longer the tail is and the lighter it is, the 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 more it'll stabilize. And so it is a squatter little um, little 
little slug. It's really for real close in stuff like like home defense and things like that. But uh, yeah, this is a seven eight ounce slug, and I would I, I don't know about you guys, but I'd hate to be hit by something like this. But it is not a rifled slug. There is no riflings on the side. It is actually a smooth sided slug. So. Anyway, so for those that have been interested to see what it looks like on the inside, that is that is what the bad boy looks like. So, and um, and to compare it with a typical Foster slug, we're going to check out the Federal one ounce slug, and this is a two and three quarter shell. And let me show you this powder. This is actually the the fattest powder that they have. These little discs. All right, and that's in the high brass casing. If we can get it to focus. Oops, pouring some of them out there. It came with uh, this type of uh, a wadding. This was the powder side here. Let's go in a little bit, and it's a little concaved. And then you have the slug. This sits behind the slug there. And then I think this collapses when you fire it to keep it um, to keep the uh, slug from deforming or something possibly. Okay, and here is what the slug looks like. Let me just take it out of the baggie here. And that's what your typical foster slug looks like. This is a hollow point slug. Even though this slug, when it impacts something, is just going to flatten into a disc. Okay, that hollow point's not going to open up at all. It's kind of more or less um, a gimmicky type thing, but it's going to just flatten flatten out. And um, you can see the riflings on the side there. Check those guys out. And then look at the annotation, and I'll and I'll annotate that. But this is really just like a thimble. It's very, very hollow all the way up to the tip, and it works like a badminton, um, uh, what do they call that? What do they call the badminton thing? Birdie? A birdie, yeah. <laughs> works like the birdie and the badminton thing, which it stabilizes. Having the weight up front keeps it from flipping over, and so that's that's the idea. Now, the reason why they, they the reason why Foster introduced the, the, the grooves in the first place, the riflings, um, was supposedly to keep the air, as the air passed over the slug, it was supposed to impart some spin to the slug to allow it to to stabilize. But I think they've pretty much disproved that as ineffective. And so, but they did keep it because it helps it fit a little snugger into the barrel and it gives the uh, the slug some compressibility. So those, those um, riflings will compress down a little bit as it goes through certain um, tighter chokes at the end of the barrel and it can keep it from damaging the barrel as much so anyway that's uh that's your typical rifled slug uh, again i would hate to be hit by one of these bad boys i think it'd just be you know absolutely devastating uh the caliber is very large <laughs> and you would be in a world of hurt if you if you had one of those in your gut so hopefully you found this to be interesting and helpful uh, please rate this video and leave a comment down below let's let's hear what what uh, you're using for your home defense loads and also tell us your philosophy behind behind what you're using. If you're using birdshot, let us know why and if you're using things like buckshot or slugs, uh, let's hear that as well. So, Alright guys, hopefully you found it interesting and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.